I'm Titi Layo Adebola, and I'm the co-moderator for the webinar today. I will start with um, the Director General of ARIPO, Mr. Dos Santos. So we know that ARIPO was formed well with its predecessor, the English-speaking African Industrial Property Organization, um, by the Lusaka Act in 1976. We know that there have been name changes with the final iteration as the African Regional Intellectual Property Organization. And in addition to the Lusaka Agreement, ARIPO has four protocols, so the Harare Protocol on Patents and Industrial Property, the Banjo um, Protocol on Max, the Swakopmund Protocol on Traditional Knowledge and Expressions of Folklore, and the Arusha Protocol on New Varieties of Plants. I was wondering, could you expand on the institution, what ARIPO means? So could you tell us more about its structure and its processes? Thank you very much um, for, to, to UTT and uh, SAND, the, the, the organizers of uh, uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, very important webinar, and uh, I think the numbers sp speak by themselves. I'm just checking here that we have more than 100 participants. I'm getting... Uh, and, the, and the maximum is 100. And, and yes, again, they, exactly. I'm getting some message, people asking me, uh, they're saying it's full, so how would, we, how would we get there? So I think this is oversubscribed. So congratulations for that. It means that you really uh, organized a webinar that is relevant for our continent. So, and I think this is the kind of dialogue that we need, and it's a dialogue that uh, is, is constructive. Um, let me go uh, straight to your, your question, Titi, and uh, to say that indeed, uh, you, as you have explained, this organization has been uh, around for 44 years now, um, and we currently have 19 member states. We started with the very small numbers, we had three or four countries that started this, and uh, the organization has been growing. And uh, the main objective of uh, a report is indeed to um, uh, put together resources, harness the, 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 the meager resource that we have in our continent in order to um, develop the intellectual property system that can serve uh, 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 their, uh, its member states. Um, we, when the organization started, as you rightly pointed out, it was limited to the English uh, speaking countries. And this is uh, precisely because um, uh, before a repo, there was another organization which was called the OAP, which is called the OAP, which uh, was born in 1962, but it was only covering the French-speaking countries. So the other countries uh, were, uh, found themselves alone uh, dealing with intellectual property. Intellectual property matters are very complex, and their administration need a lot of skills. Uh, if we take, for example, the issue of examination of patents, uh, not a single country in Africa, um, very few have the capacity to really uh, be able to, to examine patents. So these countries came together uh, to uh, harness the meager resource that they have, centralize them in one place, and then provide service back to the different uh, member states. Um, we, uh, uh, when the organization started, uh, uh, it was more in terms of like a exchange of experience and uh, supporting each other. But after some time, we realized that there was a gap that was necessary there, especially the registration. And because of that, in 1982, the member states came out with the first protocol, which is the Harare Protocol, which then now allowed the, 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 the users to register, to, to, to uh, apply for the protection of patents um, in, uh, through the repo route. Uh, other um, protocols uh, followed, uh, trademarks in 1997. Then we also had other uh, protocols like the, the, the Sokomun Protocol on Traditional Knowledge and the Plant Variety Protocol, uh, Arusha Protocol in 2015. Um, uh, the Harare Protocol on Patents, Industrial Designs and Utility Models is in force, is the, the, the oldest and the most successful. Uh, Two important characteristics of the ARIPO system is that, um, first of all, the member states are free to join the protocol that they believe serves their own interests. And because of that, 
the Harare Protocol on Patents, Industrial Design and Utility Model, is the one that is subscribed by all member states. Uh, exception is only made to Somalia because Somalia, of its uh, uh, current situation, uh, but uh, uh, Somalia would have also joined this protocol. The other protocols have different numbers in terms of accession. The, uh, the Banjul Protocol on trademarks only have 10 member states, and the, the, um, the, the uh, uh, Swakomun Protocol on traditional knowledge has eight member states. So this is the first thing. Members are free to join the protocol that they believe will serve their interests. The second characteristic that we need to um, highlight of the Aripo system uh, is the fact that uh, the Aripo system uh, exist alongside the national system. So it's what is called the designation system. Therefore, the country, um, when, when, when a user applies for a, a, an intellectual property right in the repo system, uh, then it has to indicate in which countries wants its right to be protected. Uh, this means that the national IP office remain uh, 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 there and the, RIP, the national route remain open. To the users to use. It's just another uh, option that you are given uh, to use the, the, the repo system. This is one of the main dis, uh, difference with the WAPI because the WAPI system, uh, on the contrary, is a unitary system, meaning there are no national offices. There's only one office uh, uh, that is located in, in, in Yaoundé, and all the application must go through uh, the, the, the WAPI system. Now, the a repo system is not only a registry. Uh, the repo system starts from the policy level. And let me maybe here highlight uh, the structure of a repo uh, to make it much, much clearer. The, the main organs of this organization are first, the Council of Ministers. The Council of Ministers is made of the, the ministers who are responsible for intellectual property in their respective member states usually Minister of Industry and Trade or Justice, but in some cases, uh, Science and Technology. The ministers, they meet once every two years and they define the policies of the organization. They are the one that define the, the, the main policy in terms of intellectual property. The second organ of the organization is the, the Administrative Council. The Administrative Council of Aripo is composed by the heads of the intellectual property offices of each country, of each member state. They meet every year. They, they are the ones who have the oversight on the secretariat in all matters, starting from the budget, the annual plans, uh, all our uh, 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 instruments um, are, 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 are followed uh, by the, the administrative council. Um, uh, the administrative council works even with uh, using uh, some other organs, the committees. So we have two types of committees. The administrative committees, uh, such as the uh, finance committee, the audit committee, and they look at our administration. So they have an oversight on that, and they report back to the administrative council every year. But we have the technical committees. So we have a committee that deals with copyright, a committee that deals with the traditional knowledge, a committee that deals with the uh, plant variety protection, industrial property, and copyright. So every committee is composed usually by five member states. So they alternate and they elect every two years members that, are, that serves in those committees. So they are the one who looked at the content of our uh, protocols, uh, the improvements that we propose, and they suggest recommend approval by the Administrative Council uh, every year. Policy side, legal side, uh, it's mainly the protocol, as I, as I said. But on the other side, we have other important areas of, of, uh, of interest, such as um, capacity building and uh, awareness creation. Um, we, uh, in 2006, uh, we established an academy, an IP academy at Aripo. And this is the, uh, the, the institution that mainly deals with uh, organizing uh, training programs and organizing awareness creation programs to, for our member states. And uh, uh, you may know that uh, Aripo has a flagship program, which is a, a master's program on intellectual property that runs in the Univ Africa University uh, in Zimbabwe. And uh, this uh, program is run by, by, by the cabinet. We'll come back to this. I will uh, explain in more details in, in another moment about this. 
Um, then we have many other initiatives that we organize with our partners, seminars, conference, uh, both in the headquarters of Aripo, which are in Harare, Zimbabwe, and also in the member states. So there are many activities that uh, uh, we organize uh, every year with, uh, with our partners or with our member states. 